It's not what I asked. Amen. Uh, John 17. Since John insists on positioning himself in this service, injecting himself, we might as well turn to the book that John wrote. John chapter 17. Boy, it was a hot one today. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Flush all you want to. Yeah. I went out there. Uh, I felt so bad. Um, I went out there yesterday and I'd already heard this part of the story, but the main guy that was working on putting our new uh, sewage grinder pump in and all the new, I mean, that old one, it did, it melted all of the, the plastic pipes that go to it, melted them all. So I looked down in there, everything was brand new, all those pipes, all brand new. Uh, the, the main guy working on them fell into the tank yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I went up to him yesterday. I said, I heard you needed a water hose yesterday. And uh, yeah, somebody, I guess somebody sprayed him all down or whatever. He was wearing a, one of those suits. But can you imagine it being 100 degrees outside and you're wearing one of those uh, suits to keep all that hazardous material off of, off of you? And um, so he was, he was already suffering in that suit, but it was necessary. And I guess he was glad he put it on because when he had it on, that's when he fell into the tank. And uh, I felt so bad for him. And uh, but anyway, they got it done. And I praise the Lord for that. Um, so anyway, just uh, just pray that as far as uh, it doesn't matter to me um, who was responsible. Uh, I like working with Vandeventer, the company that uh, that we bought this pump from. They're about the only ones in the area that we can deal with on that. And, um, and I like locally owned businesses anyway. I'd rather shop them than the big places. But um, so I'd rather it be some big monsters company's fault than the little guy. So, but it doesn't really matter to me. Just pray that uh, that all gets taken care of and it's, over with and so on and we don't we don't have to uh, uh, I, I, I won't say that we won't have to pay more money because I've made up my mind I don't think we ought to um, but that's neither here nor there it will just you know do what the Lord says and and I'll, I'll be honest with you I, it, when you follow the scriptures you you can be a good businessman following the scriptures but there's some things that you better be prepared to do as a Bible believing Christian. And, and that is in some cases, it's better to take the wrong and take a loss than to destroy the witness of Jesus Christ to a lost man. How much is your testimony to, to, of Jesus Christ and his grace in your life worth to you as far as another man's soul is concerned? And uh, there are some businessmen who are prominent members of their church that there are people who would just who refuse to do business with them because of their reputation. And they got one of them big Christian fish on their bumper stickers and on their logos and everything else trying to show themselves there's some great big Christian, wonderful Christian company and uh, they'll cheat you to death. So anyway. Um, just little things like that you read. You find out when you read the Bible. Amen. John chapter 17. Turn there, please. Uh, we're going to focus on verse 11 and move forward from there. I do appreciate you coming out here tonight and uh, appreciate you being faithful to God's house. Appreciate all the folks online that are with us and being faithful and attentive to God's word tonight. Uh, we got some folks out sick still and, and, and uh, some folks had to work uh, late this evening, uh, and my poor wife, pray for her. She's had two, um, 
uh, toenail operations in two weeks. Uh, she, had, she has a problem with ingrown toenails and it uh, reared up again, so she had it cut out uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, usually that does it. She went back for a checkup today and it was about as bad or worse than it was two weeks ago, so they had to do it again. And so pray for her. She's in a little bit of pain. Uh, Michael's got the same issue and he's going to see a doctor here soon. So pray for him. And, and uh, I know how those things go. I used to get them real bad when I was a teenager and uh, when I first got married. But um, they cut, they cut part of my toe off so I don't have that problem anymore. Yeah. They cut the middle out of my toe. There's, just, there's a big gap in my toe between the top and the... Never mind. Uh, my sugar's messed up, so pray for me. John chapter 17, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you for uh, letting us be in your house uh, today. And, and Lord, thank you, God, for uh, cool air conditioning. We ask, God, that you bless all of those, Lord, that have to work out this evening, work during the day in this weather. Lord, I remember those days, and Father, my heart goes out to anyone that has to put in a, a hard day's work in weather like this. I pray, God, that you'd give them grace and help them, Father. Uh, Lord, just bless us as we study your word. And, Lord, there may be somebody uh, tonight, Lord, that's just walking through a dry and, and barren wilderness. And they're in a desert, Lord, and it's hot, and they desire a cool drink of water uh, from the wells of Bethlehem like David did. Uh, when he was in a hold and the Philistines had the, had the city of Bethlehem uh, all tied up and they wouldn't let anybody in. And David cried out for the waters of the wells of Bethlehem. And I pray, dear God, that you would uh, bring some people tonight a cool drink of water uh, for their soul and let it be a blessing to them. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would bless um, uh, the word tonight that's taught. Lord, using it to, use it to open our eyes to fill our hearts, to uh, give us answers for days gone by. And Lord, Father, to fill our heart with knowledge and understanding for the days that are coming ahead. Lord, we just ask for your blessings tonight in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. John chapter 17, let's start in verse 11. And uh, I'm going to just touch on a few more things on this Holy Father deal. Uh, and then I'm going to move on from it. Um, Boy, I got burned again. Uh, I, I thought about just uh, taking my laptop tonight and putting on the screen some things I saw yesterday. It was, and it was another one of these apparitions of Mary. And it's in a town in Egypt, not, not too far from Cairo. And the, uh, of course, the tradition is that uh, Joseph in Egypt, when uh, Joseph and Mary and Jesus, when they went and escaped uh, Herod's killing all the babies, and they went to this particular town in Egypt. And um, so there was uh, an alleged Marian apparition back in the 1920s, and a bunch of people saw it. And then not too long after that, she began to show on a regular basis. Now, here, here's what I brought up uh, in the last couple of Watchmen broadcasts was, how does everybody know that's really Mary? I mean, I've, I've seen various pictures of who they think the Virgin Mary is, and none of them look the same. I mean, they kind of look the same. But how do we know what she really looked like? We don't. That's the point. And that's what God told the Israelites. You don't know what I look like. So you can't carve an image and say, that's God right there. We know it is. We don't even know what Jesus looked like. So we cannot carve an image of who we think Christ looks like or who we think Christ ought to look like or paint an image of him and pray to it and, and get and, and adore it and all those other things that people do to stuff like that. That shroud of turn to me is a joke. I could not. Are you saying, Pastor, that you don't believe that's real? I'm saying I couldn't care less if it was real or not. That doesn't ha that thing has nothing to do with my faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe it because God's word says it. And it's done. It's over with. But besides that, it doesn't match the scriptural account. So I just don't believe it. 
But they pull that thing out every so often and everybody comes and prays and adores it and they look at it and you've got people crying and everything up. They give large sums of money for this stuff. And it's just a... And, and get this now. Now, there, this is one of those interesting apparitions to me because there's actual photographic and or film and video evidence. Uh, and that to me is interesting. Um, and the photographs have been analyzed. They have not really been refuted as far as being proven to be fake. But uh, early on, the, um, this particular town, this particular city, named itself the location of the genuine apparition of the genuine mother of God, the mother of heaven, the mother of all saints, Mary herself has appeared here in this town, thus saith the Bureau of Tourism. Not, I'm not kidding you. The Bureau of Tourism has officially named this town, I can't remember what its name is, as the actual appearance location of the real Virgin Mary. So come, bring your money with you. We will sell you, and that, listen, you want to spot Babylon? That's where she is. She's making money. All you got to do is read the book of Acts and how those men got angry at Paul for preaching against Diana and the temple of Diana, saying that, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. And that got those men fired up who made a very good living for themselves, selling idols, selling trinkets, selling uh, religious, uh, whatever it was that they made, things that they used in the, in the religious worship of the goddess Diana. The same thing is being done today and it just stirs me up. And so now we have... Here, John chapter 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Um, and so you can imagine, um, we've had uh, a man that used to come here years ago. Uh, he wasn't a member. He didn't live in this area, but he'd come by here and visit every now and then. He would go around Easter time to the Vatican to hand out tracts, and, and I always supported that because I liked what he did. And uh, I know of others. I know... Um, uh, Brother Jason Cooley went up there last Easter and did pretty much the same thing, giving out tracts and street preaching. And so, I don't know that you can street preach up there, but uh, handing out gospel tracts there. And it, it is a huge, huge multi-billion dollar a year industry in the selling of the salvation that the Catholic Church has to offer in the name of the man that they call the Holy Father. And I want you to notice that it says... Uh, Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And I gleaned something from that uh, here a few years ago. I was looking at that, and I was looking at both sides of it. Number one, the fact that he's referring to God, our Father, as the Holy Father, the one and the only Holy Father, uh, the only Father that I know of that's holy. No Pope is ever holy. But anyway, as the Holy Father, and Jesus said, keep through thine own name. And what name is he referring to? Holy Father. And it's through the name Holy Father that God has kept all of us together as one, the way Jesus and his Father are one. Now, I know there's differences and there's little things that separate you and I from each other that... Uh, we're not all the same. We, we don't uh, all have to dress the same. We don't have to all look the same. We don't have to all speak the same. We don't all have to do everything exactly like. In fact, we don't even agree on everything that we believe in. And yet there can be a unity that God brings to the body of Christ. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'll show you what I mean by that. A unity in the body of Christ. And in this case here, we see that there is Unity, even though some people are different than others. Now, I am not ecumenical in any way, shape, or form, 
But I do believe there's more than just Bethel Church going to heaven. Okay? I do believe that. I believe I'll probably be shook up a little bit the first few minutes in heaven going, what are they doing here? Okay? Um, I, I, may be, I may be tossed around a little bit. I may be checking the temperature. Am I at the right place? This is heaven, right? Okay? But anyway, notice, this is how God makes us one, even though we're not the same. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Everybody in this room is breathing the same air with the same two lungs, with the same two nostrils, and the same mouth as everybody else in this room. We breathe the same oxygen content. We do the same thing in our bodies with that oxygen that our bodies require. And in that, God has made us the same. When the Spirit enters into us, it gives us life. We can live uh, 40 days without food, about three days without water, but about five minutes without air. And that's it. Okay? Unless extraordinary circumstances take place. But you must have the Spirit in you. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Uh, not everybody preaches. Not everybody can sing. Not everybody can play instruments. Not everybody can be an administrator. I am not an administrator. I do not have that gift. Uh, thank God I have other people around me that have a gift of administration or a knack for it, but I do not have it. Uh, and there are differences of administrations. In other words, there are th things that God will give one person and he'll give it to them in abundance, but he won't give it to somebody else. And God has a reason for that. I don't know what that reason may be. You don't know what that reason may be. We, we watched the other day as Everett got up and, I mean, didn't even hesitate. I asked him, did you want to play the piano? Yes! And he jumped right over there and jumped on that piano and started playing it. A little bit like Jerry Lee Lewis. No, not that bad. But he got to play in the piano. God has given him, he has administered to him a gift. Amen? And some people have strived all their life to try to play the piano and just can't do it. Some people strive to sing and they just can't do it. But it didn't, it shouldn't hold you back, amen. It's just not your gift. Don't ever be jealous of somebody else's, that's covetousness. Somebody else's gift, don't ever be jealous of that. If you think, and I've met people like this. If you think God can't use you because you can't be seen on the stage because you can't sing or you can't stand up and speak or whatever it is, then you're being covetous. You're being covetous. And that's a sin in God's eyes. Why don't you find out what your gifts are and go with those? Because there's probably somebody that would look at you and say, man, you got it together and I don't. I wish I had what you had. But the same Lord, verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it, it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now, uh, let me jump back to this Holy Father Pope issue. It is clear to me that through the name, the Holy Father, God seeks to unite his entire body together under one holy father it's all about unification of the entire body of christ now flip that over to the devil's side and you have a man who is a sinful man who worships idols blesses idols prays to idols burns incense to idols uh, believes that those idols hear his prayer and he teaches others to do the same and they by commandment call him Holy Father. I guarantee you through that 
title, Holy Father, they seek to unite every religion. In fact, get this. Maybe this is why this is on my mind tonight. In Cairo, Egypt, what, what is the predominant religion? Let's take a wild guess. Islam. Did you know that at, that, at the time when a majority of these apparitions, ap appearances, apparitions of Mary were taking place, the president of Egypt, Nassar, actually participated in an event where he saw her. And he instantaneously relaxed any restrictions against Christianity in Egypt and made laws that allowed for the benefit of especially the Catholic Church in Egypt. What was those apparitions about? Unification. And I'll tell you, to this day, Muslims and Catholics are united probably closer than any other two religions in the world. More so than Christians are united with Jews. Because Jews really don't want to be united with us. We want to be united with Jews. We want them to know who Jesus is. But Catholics and Muslims are more united now than any other two religions in the world. Part of that has to do with uh, what happened in Egypt during these apparitions. Because when he saw that, he went, Phew. that's, that's, that's got to be a sign from God. He, I mean, we're not just talking about poof and, and then it disappeared. It lasted. The, the people who testified of seeing her actual face said that it was so clear that we could see her teeth as she smiled upon us and waved her hands in a form of blessing each and every one of us that was there. And we're talking about there's probably millions of people there showing up every night waiting for her to appear. And she did on most nights. And they said the appearance of her was so clear they could see the teeth in her mouth as she smiled at everybody. Now... If you're not grounded, firmly rooted in the scriptures, in the word of God, you will fall for that in a heartbeat. You'll, I guarantee you, you'll fall for that. The most hardened atheist will fall for it. Okay? We have lying, lying signs and wonders coming. But anyway, that's the nature of this Holy Fatherism in the Catholic Church. And it is to unite religions together under and through the name of the man who bears the title of Holy Father. Now I'll move on from that. Uh, in verse 8, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. I've sat in awe and listened to preachers preach that they didn't stomp and snort and they didn't move around and they didn't get loud and they didn't scream and shout, but there was a wisdom in their preaching and in the words that they said that I was absolutely in awe of. And I was just, in some cases, almost in tears at the things that God had given to them and, and um, so on. Somebody said to me, uh, in fact, Brother Lonnie Burke said to me years ago, Brother Mike, I think God's given you a spirit of wisdom. I said, no. Mm -mm. So I've listened to some of your sermons, Brother Lonnie. I've listened to some other men that uh, that you've had down here, and I believe they've got the wisdom. God may be, have given me some knowledge and maybe, maybe some understanding, but I'm a long way away from wisdom, long way away from it. But wisdom is one of those things that when, when I hear people that have it, it just, it just makes me go, boy, I wish I had that. Well, when God gives those whom he chooses that uh, spirit, and word of wisdom, um, those words go out to those of us who don't have it. And thus that wisdom is then shared with the body of Christ. And by the way, one of the true signs that a man does have one of these spiritual gifts, like the word of wisdom, 
is that they're not selling it for $49.98. Oh, you got to have this. There's more wisdom packed in this teaching than there is any other teaching in the whole world. And you must have it or you'll fail. And now give us $85 or you can't have it. And I, listen, that makes me angry. It does. That drives me nuts. So, uh, but notice this. For, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. So who in here lacks wisdom? Raise your hand. Where's the best place to get it? The word of wisdom. Okay? At any time you need wisdom, the word will, be, will have it. It will be in the Bible. Uh, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Same thing. The word of knowledge. Knowledge is in the Bible. By the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit, if you're lacking in faith, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, it never, never ceases in my life that when I am lack in faith uh, or I'm struggling a bit uh, to, to listen to other men uh, preach their messages, uh, men that I trust, men that I know, or men that people have recommended to me, uh, to listen to them and to not be uh, full of pride and say, well, I, I don't believe I'll get anything from them. And that's a big thing with us preachers. We are hard about listening to other preachers, at least I am. And it takes, it takes a while. But anyway, uh, to break down and listen to the Word of God or listen to the preaching of the Word of God, it does help and increase our faith. It really does. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. Now, I said, hold on, Pastor. You're not one of them charismatic guys that believes in the gifts of healing. Oh, yes, I am. I, well, I'm not charismatic, but I believe in the gifts of healing. I do. I believe that God can give people to this day the gift of the laying on of hands and the gift of healing. I do believe that. Uh, I do also believe uh, in what the psalm says, he sent his word and healed them. Now, that doesn't always mean that every sickness and every ailment that you have must, uh, as Finnis Dake said, must be cast away from you or you are serving Lucifer. I do not believe that. I, do, I believe that sickness tends to draw us closer to God than drive us farther away from God. David said as such, uh, when, he, when he was talking about his ailments, he said, when, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said, I rejoiced in my infirmities. Um, Paul talked about when he was weak, he was made strong, or God was made strong in him. And so, but I do believe that, uh, that there are people who, from, who God can endow. And it may not be one person for a lifetime who just goes around healing everybody. It may pass from person to person, from time to time. Uh, and that is why we do what the book of James tells us to do. Is any among you sick? Let him go before the elders. Uh, let, their, let them anoint their head with oil. And pray for them and the prayer of uh, th that they may. I can't remember what it says. What does it say, God? Hebrews, James. I want to get this one right. The prayer of faith may, shall save, save the sick. One thing is more important than having physical ailments healed one thing is more important than that and that is to have salvation uh yeah verse uh james chapter 5 verse 14 is any uh, sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him notice where the, the focus is, it's not on the physical ailment here, it's on their sins. 
when the four men lowered the, the man down who was sick of the palsy, what was the first thing Jesus said? He stick a microphone in his face and says, Hey, you down here, brother. Bless God. God. In fact, God, you don't even have to tell me. God, hey, hey, honey, what's his name again? Say that in my earpiece. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that during homecoming. Okay? But anyway, uh, Jesus forgave his sins. Thy son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And then when everybody was like, what? What, what did he say? Only God can forgive sins. Okay? And which is harder? Is it, is it harder for me to forgive sins or is it harder for him who's got been sick of the palsy to rise up and walk? I say to thee, rise up and walk. And he rose up and walked. And he said, there, I did both of them. Now you go figure that out. Amen. I like it, I like it when Jesus had a little bit of attitude against those that didn't like him. Amen. Because he always showed them off. Now in verse, um, verse uh, 10... To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Again, prophecy may include a foretelling of future events, but primarily it is saying, this is thus saith the Lord. This is the word of the Lord right here. And again, those things are now fulfilled in all of Scripture. You do not have to believe Anybody who throws up some video on Facebook or TikTok who are making private prophecies concerning this, I, I would like to do a compilation. In fact, somebody out there listening to me, in fact, I'd almost pay you for it, to go back and do a compilation of all the people who prophesied that Donald Trump would win that second election in 2020. Make a video compilation of every of all these, and I'm not talking about just weirdos, I'm talking about people who believe that they are operating under the Spirit of God and are, and are uh, prophesying in God's name to make a video com compiling of Everybody they could find who said, God has already shown me that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States in 2020. Didn't happen, did it? Didn't happen, did it? So, what happened to all these liars that said that he was going to be president? You know what happened to them? Not one thing. The people who listened to them and the people who supported them financially and the people who made these people rich and bought their books and DVDs are still doing it. Now, I say, if you've got people who are that stupid as to believe a man or a woman when they say, God himself told me Donald Trump will be the 2020 president and it didn't happen, if those people are that stupid to believe that, then I say, let them believe every false lying thing that comes out of everybody's mouth. Amen? In fact, that's why God puts those clowns out there to test who's really following me and who isn't. Now, um, Verse 10 again, to another the working of miracles. Good grief, what time is it? Okay. I got scared for a minute. I thought that said 20 after 8. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now, when we get into homecoming, I'm going to teach um, the biblical... Um, from the Bible, what has happened to these gifts? Okay? Are there still people who can speak an unknown to them human language? I believe that it is not outside the ability of God to allow a man to do that what I believe 
But I also believe uh, what Paul said, and here I am doing my homecoming spiel. Uh, Paul said they'll cease. Where there are tongues, they shall cease. And so what has happened is, rather than individuals in a local church giving in a language that somebody there might know a word from the word of God in their language, now we have the word translated, the entire Bible translated in their language. It's what I believe. And that's uh, when that which is in part is done away, then when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And I'll teach that during the homecoming. Uh, but verse 11, all these worketh that one and that selfsame spirit. In other words, this is the, the, under the name of the Holy Father, the uniting of all of God's people, that one and selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So let me ask you this question. If a church holds a doctrine and it says you cannot be a member of this church unless you abide by this doctrine. And that doctrine says that no man or woman can be a member of this church who does not believe that the evidence of the indwelling of the Spirit of God is in the speaking of tongues. You A, are not saved and B, cannot be a member of this church. Now, number one, you wouldn't have to ask me that because I would not be a member of that church. Because there is not one place in Scripture where God, Paul, Jesus, Peter, James, John, Martha, Mary, 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 any of the Marys in the Bible ever said anything about the proof of salvation is the speaking of tongues. Never said it. In fact, uh, he says in verse 11 again, he divides to every man severally. We know what it means to sever, don't we? Separate people. Severally as he will. So, if God wants... Let's say that Matthew decides to take his family down on a, a little retreat to Mexico. And a situation comes up where, I mean, it's life and death. And he finds himself in a really, really bad position. And, and these gang members are going to just, they're going to steal all his money, kill him, whatever. And all of a sudden, Matthew, in, in perfect Spanish, begins to give them the word of God I believe it could be possible hey a donkey spoke to Balaam okay I'll let Matthew figure out what all that means all right <laughs> but anyway if God wants to do it he can do it severally as he will for as the body is one and hath many members and all members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ for by one spirit we are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether it be bond or free and have been all made to drink into that one spirit turn to ephesians 4 again just because um, what was it? They came, um, they came to Jesus saying, we found men who were not of us who were preaching in your name, Jesus. What are you going to do about it? You want us to go kill them for you? Huh? Want us to go string them up? Have a hanging? And Jesus said, leave them be. If they're not against us, they're for us. They don't have to be of our little circle, our little clique, our little gang. They don't have to be that. To be part of that, I'll tell you something that, an, an issue that I ran into as a young man. 
And I think God gave me wisdom enough to figure this out. Um, back before, um, it was right after Lisa and I got married, and I was, I was kind of looking at uh, some sort of ministry position somewhere. And there was a Southern Baptist church in this area that uh, was looking to hire a youth pastor. And some of the people in the church knew me. And so I kind of threw my hat in the ring as a candidate. And it got, I met, had a meeting with the pastor. Um, I, and then I had a, a meeting or two with the, with the deacon board. And there were several men at, in this church that were deacons. And uh, in this particular church, the boards really, they run, they run the church. If the, board, if the board don't go along with it, it don't happen. And um, I, would have, I would have probably made that deal. And so the issue came up in the meeting. Um, they asked me, was I baptized? And they asked me about my baptism. I said, well, it was here. And I said, it was done by immersion in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, just as the scripture says. And I said, um, you know, it's a Baptist church. It wasn't a Southern Baptist, but it was Baptist. And so they said, well, okay. And one guy piped up and said, well, now hang on a second. Our, our bylaws say that we accept baptism of like faith and practice. And somebody said, well, he said he was a Baptist. Well, and he said that it was done by immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They said he was a Baptist, but he did say he was a Southern Baptist. So I say that he be rebaptized. Now we dismissed that meeting, and the next day, one of the men came to me and they said, "Well, what are you thinking about that?" And I said, well, "I've been up all night thinking about that." And I said, "I may have been young, but I remember my baptism. I remember the night I was saved. I remember the night I was baptized." And I said, I wasn't doing this for everybody's benefit. I was doing this. This is what my Savior asked me to do. And this is what I did. I followed Jesus in believer's baptism. The fact that it was done in this building versus this building over here shouldn't amount to a hill of manure and that was the end of that because they they said well we, we just and it was that one guy who held everybody up said no it's got to be it's got to be of life faith, life faith and practice you got to be in southern baptist church to be baptized we just can't accept, accept, accept his baptism now that's just all there is to it that just ain't right so they would not and i thank god every day he did not let me go over there that would have been a big mistake because look at what your Bible says. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with the long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is, how many bodies are there? How many Southern Baptist bodies are there? Is God going to, did Jesus say... And when the, uh, when the Son of Man cometh and he gathereth together all of those and he's going to separate them as a shepherd divideth the Southern Baptist from the General Baptist. Is that what he said? No. It's going to be between those who are lost and those who are saved. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. And this man was 
trying to get across the idea that they and they alone had the only baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Let's count this very quickly. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Seven. Who is above all and through all and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And here he's really talking about the spirit, like the seven spirits of God. They are seven spirits and yet there is one spirit. Okay. And people just understand that you're not the only one going to heaven. You're not the only one who has the, who, who is the gatekeeper of the truth. You're not the only one. That, that teaching that I do, uh, that gets for next week. That teaching I do where I show people about how Jeremiah sold that parcel of land and they took the copy of the rec record of the, of the land uh, where they, where they um, copied out the landmarks and everything like that and wrote them down in a book and took one to, and, and sealed them both and put one in an earthen vessel and sealed it and one copy was open, and, and but they were, I'm trying to remember it right, but they were placed in an earthen vessel to be kept for a long time. And then Paul comes along and says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God has taken his treasure, this Bible, the gospel, the mysteries of God and everything, and he has found earthen vessels all over the world to put that into to keep until the very last day. And it's not one denomination that God has chosen above another. It's not one faith or one practice or one way of doing things that God has chosen and God has blessed more than others. And, I, and listen, there's, there's people in just about every group that if the truth, the truth be known, they honestly think that their way is the only way. But they just wouldn't admit it because it's not popular that way. And I say fooey on that, Amen. I think there's going to be people in heaven that are this, that, the other. There's going to be arms, legs, toes. Amen. And God's going to put them all. There's going to be dry bones in the valley. And God's going to bring them all together. Amen. And God's going to preach and he's going to blow the spirit into them. And they're going to stand up the army of God. Amen. One army. One faith. One calling. Jew and Gentile alike. Amen. I'm, here it is, right here on the front of this Bible. We the people. Uh, one of my favorite movies is called Glory. You ever seen it? Denzel Washington and and um, but it's it's about one of the uh, one of the troops that Abraham Lincoln for the Northern Army gathered together in in Massachusetts. And they were all colored men, they called them. And uh, those men fought a very bloody, vicious battle um, in, I think it was North Carolina. And it was about their struggle to be able to fight just like the white men got to fight. It was their struggle to fight for the freedom of their brothers down south so that they could be free like those men were. And uh, you know what? When all that blood got mixed together on that battlefield, on that beach there in North Carolina, it didn't matter whose blood it was. It was blood that fought to set men free. Amen. Let's stand. Oh, we got to pray. I say got to. We need to pray. Um. Pray for, man, it just seemed like there's so much going on right now for, and we're, we normally would just be spending all of our efforts trying to get ready for homecoming and, and just a lot of, th there's a lot of things going on in our family, a lot of things going on in other people's families. And, um, so just pray for this year's homecoming. Uh, you folks online, we're praying for you that, uh, we'd love to see you again and hope that God sends you here. And I hope that we can have a, a good, good gathering together uh, of God's people. Um, let's see here. So top of the list, Sister Lisa and I pray for us and our family always that God will help us. Um, 
Let's see here. Pray, pray for me and, and my health. I'm still kind of battling my blood sugar a little bit. I was laid out uh, before church. I had that fatigue on me. feels like the flu. Boy, I mean, I hate it. Um, so just pray for me. Um, and let's see here. Uh, who, who can I pray for? Pray for our son, Caleb. Um, he's got a girl in his life and he, he's pretty good about picking smart girls. But I'm thinking, well, why'd they, why'd they choose him? I don't know. But anyway, just, just pray for him because he responds well to that. He does. And so just pray for him. God will bring him to salvation, okay? Uh, we have Nancy. We have Rick. Uh, Sister Pam. Gary. J.R. Dave and Emily. Chris and David. Stan and his wife. Pray for them. Joey Miller asked us to pray uh, for him uh, and his health. And Joey, we love you and we're praying for you. And all the things that uh, are against you right now, we're praying for you. Uh, I, had a, I had a phone call with a lady, and I'm not going to describe it. I'm not going to talk about it. But it was a bad, bad phone call. It started out bad and went downhill from there. And there, I'll just say there's a woman out there that just needs a lot of help. And it's help that I can't give her, our church can't give her. Um, she just laid a lot of accusations against us that I thought was very unfair. But uh, I am going to pray for her. And I want you to pray for her too. I'm not going to tell you her name or anything like that. But just lift, just say, God, whoever this lady is, just help her. Because she needs a lot of help. Okay? She really does. Um, Brenna is on here. Tr Stephen Tracy uh, Oliger. Uh, Sister Betty Walsh, uh, pray for Sister Rose. God will get her back on her feet. Man, we need her around here. Um, Ron and Sandy, pray for Sterling and Gloria. Uh, Cubby and Cindy. Uh, let's see here. Sister Lynn, Derek's family. Uh, pray for Brother Roy. Uh, Brian and Pam and Noah and their family, he got, finally got, what was his last one? His last uh, chemo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for that. And so pray for them. Uh, let's see here. Who, Catherine White. Who else here? Raise your hand. Who's got a prayer request here? Yes, J.R. Mm. And a preacher friend that died that way, died in a car accident, but they say that his heart went out and he had a heart attack and was dead before his car ever hit the tree. And uh, that, was a, that was a tragic thing. Uh, by the way, somebody asked about you the other day. They said, you got a young man in your church. He used, used to work at Hardy's. They said his name was, oh, that was initials. I said, uh, was it J.R.? And they said, yeah. They said, what did the J, what did the J stand for? I said, J. That's <laughs> uh, an old joke. Who else? Yes, Everett. Uh-huh. How long are you going to keep it? Okay. All right, let it go. All right, Derek. All right, let's come in and pray tonight.
Father, we come before you tonight and just thank you, Lord, so much for bringing us through another day. Lord, it just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, Lord, it just seemed like it could have been a day of peril for somebody. I don't know why that's on my mind today. It could have been a real bad day for somebody, but maybe you intervened and we don't even know about it. Lord, I just, I have a feeling, God, that you do that a lot for us. Is that you stand in the way and you intervene on our behalf and angels pull us out of situations, God, that if we got into, we'd probably be dead by now. Father, I just thank you for the outcome of this day so far and for blessing people the way you have. Lord, there's many people, Father, that need a blessing from you. They need help from you. I'm one of them. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would grant me your grace and the strength, dear God, to uh, continue to do what I believe you've called me to do, to give me help, Father, to do it. Lord, I'm, I'm not... Um, doesn't seem like I'm getting any stronger in my body or stronger in my health. So, Father, I pray, God, that you would minister grace to me, that where I am weak, you would be strong uh, in my place and for me. And Father, I pray that for every, everybody. Lord, the, the things in life that they deal with, God, they, we just know, Lord, that they're not strong. And I pray, dear God, that you would give them grace and help them, Father. Lord, be with my wife tonight. She has a lot of burdens, a lot of pressures on her heart. A lot of things, dear God, that are going on right now. And Lord, she's just given everything she's got for the benefit and the sake of her family and her church. And I pray, dear God, that you would bless her for it. And I thank you for her, for what she means to our family what she means to our church. And Father, for all my children, God, I pray that you would continue to bless them. And I thank you, dear God, for the good things that you've done. And I pray, dear God, for the things you have yet to do. But Lord, you are so good to us and you've proved yourself so mighty. And I, Lord, I thank you for that. So Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just bless the things that we have mentioned here tonight, the health of other people, dear God, but Father, I'm just, Lord, I just don't want to let a prayer time go by without praying for people that we know are lost. And Father, they need more than, more than healing. They need it more than they need their bills paid. They need it, God, more than they need uh, doctors and nurses and medicines. Father, they need the grace of salvation in their life, the forgiveness of their sins. They need, Father, to be partakers of the divine, everlasting covenant between you and mankind. God, they need that more than they need another breath and life itself, Father. For without that, their life would be ended forever. And Father, we just pray right now, Father, we mention somebody to you by name, that we know to be lost. We ask you, God, Lord, Father, would you save them? Would you bring them to you? Would you give them mercy? And grant to them pardon and, and free grace. And Father, bring a change in their life, a change that will last and last them through all the way to the end. Father, we just ask for your blessings now. Thank you, God, for bringing us together tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would make us a church, Father, that is one and united together. We're united by our love for you, our love for your word, our love for one another. We ask your blessings now and dismiss us in your care. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.